Hello, this is John Moore with Appalachian Homes, People, and Places. And behind me is the Roof Cock Store. It's located here in Camel County in an area called Stinking Creek. Some of you might have saw the picture I posted a, a few days ago trying to find the, the owner of the store. And thanks to the help of uh, some of the comments, I was able to track down Robin. Her and her husband own this property here in this area now. They bought this property back from her aunt some years ago. And it's been in the family for a hundred years probably now and I've been talking to Robin today and she's been showing me uh, her great-grandfather's house that she owns that they remodeled and we're gonna go look at that in a few minutes and let you see that and uh, she's been telling me a little bit of the history that she knows and uh, Robin do you care to come up here just a minute and uh, this is Robin and I appreciate her giving us the opportunity to come look at this piece of history and uh, she's wanting to preserve this the uh, and do a little bit of work to make sure the foundation stays solid. And uh, if they do anything like they did to the house, <laughs> which I don't think you'll spend that kind of money on the no. store, but they did a wonderful job restoring the house. So make sure you stay to the end of the video and I'll show you the house. And Robin's gonna take us in and let us see the inside of it. It's been maybe a little while since it's been opened up. So come along and see what it looks like in this old store. So this was, this was a part of the store you think this building beside of it maybe that was a garage a garage with they... andy andy went to andy built that and he went to georgia somewhere in atlanta and bought a little bus to haul those kids to school and he parked the bus in that garage okay so we was reading about that at your house that he was one of the first people to run a bus in this area so your great-grandfather andy mccullough owned probably all the property on this side of the road maybe around through the creek and Moved here in the maybe the early 20s, mm -hmm. built a house, and mm -hmm. then started a store. Yes. Then your great grandmother, and and your or your grandmother Ruth, mm -hmm. uh, and her husband Ernest. Yes. Got married. They moved, lived over here. They lived there in the house. And eventually Ruth took over the store yes. when your great grandfather moved to Williamsburg. That's right. And uh, so it ran until maybe the 80s, we believe, maybe early 1980s. Yeah, maybe even up into the 90s. Maybe, maybe into the 90s? Early 90s. Early 90s. She, she passed away about 93. That's right. So so we're going to go in and look at it for the very first time. Actually, and then several... actually, I think she passed in 2003. 2003? No, no, no. No, it's 93. You're right. 93? You're right. Okay. You're right. So it's still an original shape, looks like, except it lost one of the... Um, Yes, one of the side rooms had gotten knocked down by a tree. A tree fell. I can't remember what year it was, but a tree did take off that side of the store. So I, I got a copy of a, a picture of it when it still had the uh, uh, gas pump, and there's also a picture of your grandma sitting out here. Yes. So, uh, yeah, this is just uh, a, a piece of history that is fast fading. A lot of these little buildings have been tore down and uh, given up on, but uh, you've held on to it and hoping to preserve it, I believe, right? I am hoping to preserve it. <laughs> we'll see. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, it's mess. <laughs> There's no electricity in here, of course. Oh, wow. This is uh, really neat, love it. <laughs> so it looks like it might've had a door at the back at one time. Yes. So they probably had a back porch that's probably not there now. I'm not 100% sure about that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So this would have been one of the counters maybe. Yes, the counters used to sit, there was one that sat, this one probably sat more down here. And this one was probably over there. And then that there. connected yeah. here and then it connected here. Okay, so you walked behind the counter. You walked already. behind the counter all the way around. So, probably, I'm seeing probably the, the coal stove was right here, the yes. most likely. Most likely, yes. So, that's where the, yes, that's where that chimney is. So we still got some old Apparently. signage right here. This is an old coat poster and it's been covered over. Yes. You've actually got another one There's underneath another one. one. Behind it. Yeah. Isn't that something? Uh, yep. This is my favorite, the Loretta Young. Wow. Be cool if you could get those and get them restored somehow, yes. redone. Yes. And we have this 
old Pepsi Cola. <laughs> and this is a cool a Royal Crown. Oh, yeah, Royal Crown. Cigarette. And this is another one of those, I think, similar. Yeah, you got one right down here. Oh, mm -hmm. This one's in a lot better shape right here. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, Diet Pepsi, how about that? That's probably the 70s, I would think. Probably. So this area, a lot of people watching the video don't know, this was a coal mining area. Mm -hmm. And you was telling me about uh, your grandmother putting in a gas pump for one of the strip mines. Yes, her cousin, uh, Luther McCullough, had a coal tipple. And he put a... He helped Mama get a gas pump and an air pump and uh, air compressor that was on the other side of the store. And it um, helped him uh, fuel up his coal trucks. You know, he probably didn't have electricity at the strip mine. Now, if it had been a deep mine, they probably would have had electricity. But okay. a strip mine, they didn't generally have electricity. So they needed a place to get air for their tires and get gas and mm -hmm. get a bologna sandwich probably. Right. And that's <laughs> she did a lot of bologna and cheese. Yeah. Oh. So you moved away when you got married. After, uh, yes, I moved and, away in 82. So, but it was still open. So do you remember coming down here much during that time? Yes. Yes, I would come down with Mama some. Yeah. I didn't help her much in the store, but I always come to see what she was doing and see who was there. <laughs> come by the visit with her? Uh-huh. Yeah, did she, uh, did she ever do any gardening and, and can stuff and sell it? Or oh, I don't know if she sold it. Most of her canning, she did a lot of canning um, and preserving, and a lot of it she gave away to people. Oh, really? In the area? Probably helped a lot of people that needed help in yeah, the area. Yeah, she probably did. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so she lived right here across the street. So you you showed me a picture. I believe they were steps. They came to be steps that came down. Come down right to the store. Mm -hmm. So she probably opened up pretty early for the coal miners in mm -hmm. the mornings. And well, yes, maybe she did. Uh, you know, back years ago. But I remember when the business became kind of spotty. They would drive up and blow their horn, and then she would come down. Oh, but so she was she, not always in here. <laughs> so you just pull up, blow your horn, yeah, and she That is come exactly down. right. Well, how about that? Or you would hear someone yell, hey, Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> how about that? So, yeah, we don't see these old stores no more, and I'm sure glad that, uh, that you have really... Uh, bought this property from your aunt and uh did then your husband loves coming up here to uh hunt he but, loves it so he loves it probably more than me <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you grew up here so a lot of people like to return where they grew up at and have right. especially if they can get some of their family's property and um so yeah let's step back outside just a second here and uh it's got some bars on the windows here i guess to keep people from getting in back yes. in the day yes uh, i and this is old <laughs> so your your grandpa's house that we're going to take and show them is just right over here uh, that you own now. Uh, we're going to walk up there and let you see that. And then the outhouse, there's a building out back right there. That building there, we're going to go up and look at that. So we're back up here to the house. This is the uh, McCullough house and robin's great-grandfather built this house probably in the early 20s and it's uh been in the family i guess ever since then and robin uh, has it now and they started six years ago restoring the house and they've done an amazing job inside i'm gonna take you inside and let you see what they've done they've uh, left that exterior rustic looking and uh, the interior has been updated completely and uh, the porch goes all the way around it's amazing. Come on in. Let's go look at it. Now, one of the things um, I have, when I first came up here, I was wanting to get a plaque to put on the house. Andy McCauley was like the squire of this area. He was like the person they, you know, people would come to when they needed help or advice. And he, he was really the pillar of the community. And he had a, he was the only one in the community that had a phone. So when there was an emergency or something had needed to be done or someone needed to be called, they would come here or he would get a call in from somewhere. Um, and there's a, a phone. I'm going to show you that too. I thought that was, that's still there. So let me ask you a question before I forget, because uh, I see this for, before we go to the phone, just one second, because it'll slip my mind. Okay. I noticed on some of the older houses, mm -hmm. they have two front doors. Did, did you ever figure out why that has two front doors? 
<laughs> I have no idea. But yes, I do not know why. But now this, I can tell you one thing. I'm sure it was very convenient. My grandmother's, when she lived here, the oldest daughter, Jean, um, she helped with uh, Andy. She was kind of a helper with Andy and his wife. And she would come and help Julia, his wife, with the chores. But at night, Jean would leave Mamaw's house, her, her own home, and she would come and she would go in that door and that was her bedroom. And there was a little fireplace. There was actually, the inside of this house had a fireplace on this side of the room and on that side of the room. Was it like that when you lived here as a kid? Yes. Yeah. It had two fireplaces in yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the chimney was so bad we couldn't do that. Yeah. So we just made the one. But it did have dual fireplaces. And this was a, they didn't have a living room. This was a bedroom. And so at night when Jean would come, Andy and his wife would already be in bed and asleep. And she would go in that door and go to bed. Okay. So, so it's just like two bedrooms it basically. Was two bedrooms. Yeah. It really okay. Was. That's. <laughs> So that's you said that uh, your your yeah, that's from the electrical of the uh, phone. A, you think? I think it's from the phone. Yeah. I really think it is. I think it's Bell South. Well, they also could have been t uh, just electrical wiring, possibly on that. Well, it's hard to say, was, but it's. Uh, yeah, I it, was thinking they said they thought that was the phone. Yeah, possibly if they remember it, that's possibly what it was. But the wiring would have been used on that if they had electricity much in here. Well, the electricity was put in here in the 40s. 40s. 40s or 50s. There was a man came from Jellico, and he uh, put the electricity in. Yeah. So once you started the remodel on this house, how long did it take to get it finished? To About a year. About a year. At least a year. Let's walk, I'm going to walk around the porch here and let people see the beautiful view you've got here of uh, the mountains and the area here. It's going to be real pretty before too long with the leaves turning on it. Yes, it will be. I can't wait. So, yeah, this is the type of porch a lot of people dream of having something like this just to come out and sit and be able to walk all the way around the house on the porch. Well, you can get a lot of people sitting out here. It's amazing how many people in such a small house but how many people you can actually have here and still be comfortable oh yeah with this porch you can have people everywhere than out in the yard and uh, so I, I see that you have some speakers here what's these for oh that's air um that is their alarm system alarm system and if anyone <laughs> if anyone opens that door you can hear that bullhorn miles away i saw another one on the other side yes. so yes, yes. Well, if anybody breaks in everybody in the neighbors Every, go, yes. they're Everyone gonna know. Stinking creep will know <laughs> that someone has broken into our house <laughs> so let's, uh, let's go inside there and look and see what let the people see what all you've done it's just been a beautiful day to come up here and not been too hot this weather's about wore me out this summer oh, it me too it's been, it's beautiful today so it looks like you just completely just started new on the interior. You said that you raised the ceiling up. Yes, we took the ceiling up about 18 inches. So it really gave us enough space to put in fans. That was my number one priority. I needed some fans. They did that most likely to keep it warmer. I'm sure they did. They kept the lower ceilings, and, and it might have even had a, did you change the, that original door, or was that the... Uh, oh, no, these the, are, I had to change the doors. Was the height the same, or did you have to no, raise them, too? I raised the doors. They made shorter doors yes. back then, didn't they? Yes, they, yeah. were very, they were very short. I could literally touch, I could tippy-toe and touch the ceiling. So you say your husband mostly uses this for... Uh, coming up to when he wants to go hunting and different yes. things yes and his friends he says i have spoiled his friends <laughs> they don't want to hunt as much as they used to they like to stay here <laughs> <laughs> they want to just hang out they and hang out enjoy here. uh the porch probably yes oh, okay we put a fan in here i couldn't get a fan into this room because of the bunk beds but i just really love my fan oh yeah is that not cool yeah and then this is the bathroom and I did get a washer and dryer in. So originally, when you lived here, you said something about an outhouse. Did it have running water when you lived here? No, it did not. It did not. So you lived here back yes. in the day before it had a... Well, I take that back. It did have running water. It just didn't have a... It didn't have a bathroom. Didn't it have a bathroom. But my father put in a bathroom when we were here. Not soon after we got here. 
and this is this is this room that has this door and we made it a, a bedroom absolutely beautiful in here yep i see you. you've got all the modern conveniences you've got recessed lighting air mm -hmm. condition mm -hmm. <laughs> yes beautiful yes thank you it's great to i love it when people uh preserve stuff you know so many times you see different uh places that just never get redone you know and that's been in your family for so long it yeah. makes it a uh, something really special to you it's not just like you bought a place you lived here as a kid and then right. come back right. years later and bought it back and right. and you bought this from your aunt the property back from your aunt that I she did. hit yeah mm -hmm. well so did you do some work to the shed too yes we had to well i mean it was like that but we had to go in there with some um more of the mortar around the rock to um kind of level it back up uh, some of the rock was missing and cracked so we we did kind of put it back together a little bit yeah well it's neat uh, did i use it for a smokehouse or do, do you I know i used it probably for maybe but i think it was mainly for canning i think she kept um uh, Andy's wife kept a lot of the, the canning um, in their storage. Okay. Yeah. You'll like the back of it. We made a garage out of it. Oh, I see that. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Well, it looks like you've had to come in here and do some work because it looks like yes. there's some, been some structural work yes, done we here. Did, we did, yeah, yeah, yeah. We tried to keep it up. Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah. And it worked out for Brad. Great place to store his <laughs> right, four wheelers. Yeah. So. And this, I haven't had time, but I need to come out here with a ladder and finish because this was completely covered in vines. And so we had to pull it all off, we'll kill it, pull it all off. And I had no idea there was a window there. So that was pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun discovering stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right, so we've been talking a little bit about uh, your grandparents and your great grandparents. And then you lived here as a child for a while. And to your mom, tell us the story about what happened with the snake. <laughs> she was telling me this story, and I thought it was interesting. Her mom said she had enough of the country and wanted yes. to move. What, what happened? Well, they came home. My mom and dad came home from a weekend on the lake. And um, when my mother came into the kitchen, there was a snake that had crawled across her uh, dishes and left its skin. So there was a snake skin hanging there on the dishes. And she said, that's it. We're going back to town. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you've, you and your husband's done a wonderful job, uh, spent a lot of money, I can tell. <laughs> you could have built several houses for, for what you probably had to spend restoring this. And that's part of restoration a lot of people don't understand. They think, oh, there's a building there, then you can spend a little bit of paint and, and sheetrock and yeah. maybe fix it. But it goes into plumbing and electrical and flooring and you, got, you had to level this property here yes. back up. You said it dropped 18 inches. I see you've got nice columns, uh, supports built underneath it. Yeah. Originally you said it had uh, wood posts like it would have probably in the right. 20s. And That's right. So, uh, so maybe if you get started, get, can get somebody to come work on the store, yes. we'll come back and film again. Yes, that would be wonderful. I would love that. Yeah, and we can uh, maybe keep up with what's going on. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time today, Robin. You're welcome. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.